The Fusion Control Panel is provided free with all of our microprocessor-based controllers. This software allows you to conveniently monitor and adjust your controller settings. In 2014, we are releasing our controllers with Control Panel 3.5, which is required to run firmware version 5.0. Firmware 5.0 adds new features and makes the control panel even more customizable. These include custom display, zero cross transformer mode, user lock, three-phase load and balance, monitor parameters, and the ability to name IP addresses. In this video, we will cover a few of these features found under Display Control and User Settings. First, connect to a powered controller via USB. Open the control panel and click Connect on the left side of the screen. Then click on the System tab and on the right side of the screen you will find the display control options and user settings. The display control options dictate what information will be available on your controller's digital display. Clicking on default screen list returns the screen list to manufacturing defaults. Selecting custom screen list opens a new window. From here you can choose what relevant data appears on your controller display or create custom text. The controller can display a maximum of 50 screens. Each screen contains up to two lines of text. The screen list tells us which parameters are currently being displayed. To add or remove screens, select a parameter from the display list and select Add, Remove, or Replace. For example, Say I want control loop response for zone 1. I would like it to display above this parameter, feedback zone 1, so I select that parameter and click add. This third window tells us how the parameter will appear on the controller display as slew rate Z1. When we click program, these changes will be applied. Custom text may be useful for naming a controller or giving instructions specific to your task. Enter the text you wish to display in the custom text fields, a maximum of 16 characters per line. Highlight custom text from the end of the display list and choose add or replace. Under Analog Input Monitor Params are options to specify titles and units for monitor parameters. We will cover how to use analog inputs for general purpose in another tutorial. Again, to approve these changes, select Program and close the Custom Screen List dialog box. You must then reset the controller for the changes to take effect. We can now scroll on the display to see our custom text. Many parameters can be edited from the controller display itself. Parameter lock prevents users from changing specific parameters unless they enter the right password. By default, this password is 4000. To lock individual parameters, open the parameter lock menu, select the parameters you wish to lock, enter your password, and click Program to make the change. You may also choose to use the Lock All or Unlock All buttons. Once the initial password is entered, you may also change the password by selecting the Change Password checkbox and entering a new four number combination into the field. An editable parameter will appear on the controller display with a dot preceding the text. Pressing the green checkmark key will allow you to edit the parameter value. When the parameter is locked, an asterisk appears instead, and the green checkmark key will prompt you to enter the password. Use the plus and minus keys to cycle through numbers 1 through 10, 
and the arrow keys to move back and forth between the four digits. Finally, the green check mark key will apply the password. Now let's return to the display control options. If the auto scroll enabled checkbox is selected, the controller display will cycle through the approved parameters. Auto scroll also resumes after 10 minutes of inactivity and can be turned on via the controller display panel by pressing and holding the up arrow key. Finally, we will cover user settings. The controller holds three sets of settings, current settings, manufacturing defaults, and backup settings saved by the user. In a previous tutorial, we discussed saving and loading config files. In that procedure, the current settings are copied to a file on a PC that is connected to the controller by a USB cable. In the same tutorial, we also explained returning a controller to its original factory settings by using the Restore Manufacturing Defaults button. Firmware version 5.0 allows you to save current settings to a backup file on the controller and load from those previously saved settings. The respective commands are found here. Save to backup and restore from backup. For more information, you can visit our website at www.cciPower.com or contact the experts directly at Control Concepts Incorporated.